We are joined now by State Senator Rosemary Bayer from Michigan's 12th District with us once again on the Oakland County Megacast. Senator Bayer, thank you for being with us today. Thank you so much, Tyler. I appreciate you being asked again. Yeah, I love appreciate, it. appreciate having you back. How have you been since we last spoke? Busy. Yeah, don't, bu very busy. A few things going on. Yeah. yeah, just a few small things happening. Yeah, just it, it's uh, we're, we're just a little busy right now. Just a little bit of a critical time that we're in. So the uh, COVID-19 response from the state of Michigan continues to be very stringent. Governor Whitmer just this morning, uh, or just late last night, had announced some more stringent regulations on top of what was already in place in northern Michigan and throughout the state of Michigan in terms of uh, social gatherings. What, what's your evaluation on the governor's decision making in recent weeks in regards to COVID-19? Do you believe that the response has continued to be going at a proper pace or are we st sort of stagnating and getting uh, things back to some sort semblance of normalcy? Uh, you know, we, of course, you know, we were all really excited because we were in, we've gotten ourselves to such a great spot, right? We really were kind of had they had the best rating in the whole country actually for a little while. And uh, I think we got overconfident maybe, or maybe people are just tired of the whole thing. And so, you know, a little bit of resistance flares up and people won't wear masks and, and or follow the distancing rules. And so we see the, the numbers creeping back up. I, I think that one of the great things about the model that the governor put in place for us here is the ability to adjust as needed, right? So. One, to, we can react quickly as things change, but also very targeted. So we, you know, with the data that's coming in and the analysis that happens every single day, the, the, we can pinpoint, right? Our governor can pinpoint the response. It says, this has to change today and this doesn't, or we can make something better over here. And I think that's really the best opportunity for all of us. You can look at your area, you can look at, you know, does this change impact me? And is there something I can do that maybe would keep that from getting worse or maybe even make it better, right? If we can get our own communities to participate and, you know, wear masks, wear masks, wear masks, we can't even say that enough, but um, uh, that's our, that's our, those are our best tools for, for getting through this in the healthiest possible way. But I think she's doing a great job at responding quickly and we can always go back, right? I mean, we're just, we're gonna be able to constantly ebb and flow as needed. Senator Bayer, as we prepare in a couple of weeks to send our kids back to school, we've seen um, several different points of contention from our school, from from our schools, and from teachers as well. Um, in recent weeks, uh, Detroit, the Detroit school district, was required by the by the courts to test all of its 600 plus students in their summer school programs. Do you believe that kids should have to be tested? For coronavirus before they go back to in-person learning in the fall in the state of Michigan? Well, if we had the means, the ability to do at-home testing every morning that takes like 15 minutes, and then you know whether you should go out that day or not, once we get there, then it makes sense to me. I, To be honest, you know, testing before school starts, there's such a lag, even in the time you get your test drawn to the time you get the results, then there's school some days later, and in all that time, something could have happened, and then the minute you walk into the school, you could get infected again. I mean, it's, you know, the, the, the way we test right now is not really support the notion that it makes sense to test all the kids before they go to school, the way it is now. Actually, it is feasible, you know, if this goes on a long time, that we could get to the point where we can do a quick you know, at home pin brick or spit test or something and, and test yourself in the morning and don't go to work if you're sick. Or work at home if you're sick. Don't go to school if you're sick. Go to school at home if you're sick. I mean, that, you know, we could get to that point. I don't know if we'll need to or not. Can you talk a little bit about mm -hmm. the bill to pause standardized testing right now for the kids? Well, uh, I'm, I'm one of the sponsors. <laughs> I believe in pausing. Standardized testing. I think one of the things that we want to focus on in Lansing is all the supports and protections and enablers that we can give to our educators, our education system, to allow them to try to teach. I think that should be our priority. So things that don't allow them to connect with their students who are, you know, actually been really challenged, right, over these last months 
the separation has been very painful in a lot of ways. And we know there's been beyond the usual makeup time, there's actually other mental issues that go along with not seeing people and not being involved. It's isolation. It happens to seniors and kids, all of us. Um, so we want to support them in the work of bringing the kids back to school and teaching them, not in the time and the disruption it takes to do testing. Or for really, there's more to it than that. We should suspend third grade reading laws. We should suspend teacher evaluations. We need to suspend or change the way we count for funding from the state, right? We count based on seats in your butts in seats, sorry, butts in seats on a specific day. That makes no sense this year. So there's a whole bunch of things that we've always, that we've been doing for a while. And in this, you know, there's reason for those things, but at this time, we need to pause things that do not support teaching our kids, support our teachers to do that. That's, that's anything else we can find that we could suspend. We want to do that too. Senator Rosemary Bayer with us from Michigan's 12th district. Senator, this week we've seen uh, large scale protests from teachers unions in the state of Michigan about returning to in-person learning in the fall. Many arguing that it's not going to be a safe situation for themselves or for the students. Um, what, what's, what are your thoughts on that situation? Do you believe that it is that we are at a point where it would be safe for in-person learning? Should we be pushing more for virtual learning? And would the state be able to, at that point, without federal aid, support that and be able to provide the means to these school districts to provide those means to their students to learn virtually in those situations? Well, I, you know, that's a very long question. The, first of all, I don't think... I don't know that we have the means to support education in any form right now for this coming year. Um, the revenue expectations for the decline in revenue for this year in the school aid fund are significant, it's over a billion dollars. Um, to even to be able to support what we did last year, we, we don't have the funds for that. And one of the things we know is whatever model turns out to be the, the one that your district chooses, whether it's full-time in person, whether it's hybrid model or whether it's full-time at home, all of those things are gonna cost more than they did last year. So we don't have the money that we had last year. We for sure don't have the money to do more than that, right? So we must continue to push on the federal government to get some support for our education system just to be able to have school. It's really, you know, that's, it's that, it's that black and white almost. So. Um, the, the other problem, you know, I'm on mostly budget committees. We've talked about that before. The school aid budget is by far the biggest chunk of our discretionary spending in the state. So you, we can't even really steal enough <laughs> from the other budgets, even if that was appropriate, um, to find a way to make up for it is really hard. I, I, it is the primary focus, I think, in all the budget meetings that I've had and the conversations I've had. It's, you know, there's health of people and education. Those are the top two things. So. Everyone is trying to find a way, uh, but we are really short on money for, for how to do this. Uh, so the first question, part of the question was whether it's safe for teachers. And I, you know, I think that that is still in question, to be honest. I, I know the most recent study I, I read shows that kids are spreaders of the disease and the taller you are, the more likely adults are to catch it from you. Um, that young, young kids are, less contagious perhaps for adults because they're so much shorter and their breath is lower down than we typically. Now I will say, having been in lower elementary classes, I have sat on the floor with kids and teachers who sit on the floor with kids all the time. So I don't even know if the height thing is gonna work. So I don't know that we know the answer yet. And I think that's part of why there is yet no rigid uh, rule on how we do school this fall. And right now it is still, and maybe it will stay this way, because it's more local, just like the governor is using the regions in the state to make determinations locally, even down to the city level, even down to a neighborhood almost, um, on where you are on that on that spectrum of, of uh, COVID protections. The same thing for school districts, right? Depending on your environment, you, it's good that you have some flexibility over what's the right thing for the kids there and the teachers there. So, I don't know that we're ever going to have a, you know, everybody must do this. I, we might. I mean, if it gets bad, who knows, right? Um, we certainly shut the schools down early in the year. So there's that. I don't think we know. And that's why there's no, that's why there's nothing more definitive and why you see in West Bloomfield, of course, the, the 
oh, the model plan now is all online. In Ann Arbor, it's all online. I think there's going to be a mix of schools that are all, I had one superintendent I talked to the other day who said they are going to be all in person. Um, it's, a, it's a small uh, public charter, so it's not, it's not a lot of schools, but they're starting up in August, all in person. Um, right now, it's all over the map. COVID-19 has created a financial crisis with the federal unemployment benefits going away this week. I know you've been working on trying to expand the state of Michigan's unemployment benefits. Can you talk a little bit about that? What would it be and why is it needed? Well, our uh, maximum unemployment benefit is just a little over $400 a week which without the federal subsidy right now, you can't pay your bills and feed yourself, let alone a family on $400 a week. So that is literally starvation pay. And it's been cut repeatedly over the last two decades or so. And uh, uh, we pe people can't survive on that. So without that, extra money from the federal government, we must do more in Michigan. I mean, we simply can't let our people starve. We can't. So um, the uh, eviction moratorium has ended for the state. I know some counties are continuing that and there's some grant protection for landlords and people who need more additional help with eviction issues. But um, you know, given the, if this continues as it is and we continue to have the numbers of people that we have on unemployment, um, we're going to have to relook at all those basic needs at the state level. And we have proposed that in the Senate. Um, I think that has been uh, proposals in the House as well to raise the, the unemployment rates for all the residents. And so far, we have not been able to get a hearing on any of those Democratic bills. Senator Rosemary Bayer with us. She's from Michigan's 12th district with us on the Oakland County Megacast. Senator uh, Senator Bayer, we're approaching the primary election in the state of Michigan next week on August 4th, and then, of course, the uh, general election in November, expecting a record number of votes by absentee, ba by absentee ballot. We're already seeing uh, absentee ballot registrations are through the roof uh, now with the, of course, bill that was passed uh, through the election in 2018 the constitutional amendment allowing for no reason absentee voting. But there are concerns with that uh, with that being in, in place here in the state of Michigan about there being an influx of mail-in ballots, those having to be into their local clerks by the time that polls close on election day and of the general security of the election because of the influx of mail-in ballots. Even this morning, the president had tweeted suggesting the possibility that we should consider uh, suspending the election or postponing the election until it would be safe to do so. What are your thoughts on the mail-in ballots and being able to submit them in, in a timely manner and what help the state may be able to provide to voters to ensure that their ballots do get in on time without them having to submit them several weeks out from the election when they're making these critical decisions? Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't think anybody planned for the budget cuts that have been happening in the post office and the postal service. So that's a big piece of some of the challenges we're seeing in delays in delivery. I know I personally experienced things coming in the mail that were, were put in the mailbox two months ago even. So um, yeah, we're gonna have to you know talk about changing dates, timelines for November. Uh, we do have right now, I think we're worried about next week and I, there is a uh, website that people can go to if I, I want to just make sure everybody hears this. It's you go to mi.gov slash vote. You can, within a minute, check the status. If you've put your ballot in the mail or in the box at your uh, local uh, township office or city offices, you can check the status of your ballot if it's turned in. They haven't opened it, of course, but you can see if it's been turned in. If it has not, and you should probably go, I mean, think about going over there. Here's your option. Go over to your location, your municipal location, your clerk's office, and have them spoil that ballot, give you a new one. You can then vote right on the spot and turn it in. You can take it out, turn it in, but put it in the box. From this point on, don't be putting things in the mail. Make no assumptions that it'll get there in time for this next week, right, for August 4th. So pick it up 
vote right there on the spot or take it with you and go back and put it in that box. No more mailing from this point on and check your current status on your ballots. I checked mine. It's mi. It's mi.gov slash vote. That's the best way to find out what's going on. In the future, we're going to have to adjust. I think we'll adjust dates with the, you know, we'll talk with the Secretary of State to, uh, to, to find, to make sure that we can, we just, you know, the whole point of this voting rights initiative was to make sure everybody got to vote. And if the, now we're worried that their votes won't get delivered because of changes in the postal system, no, we're going to fix that. We got to fix that. Senator Rosemary Bayer with us from Michigan's 12th district. Just another minute or so before we have to let you go, Senator. Anything else that you'd like to touch on today before we let you go? Um, no, I think the only other thing is just to support the the education teaching the teachers, the education system in general, and our teachers. Um, we need to make sure that we don't lose teachers. We're going to need more teachers than ever this year, so we need to hold on to them. So support your teachers. And secondly, wear a mask. Wear a mask. Wear a mask. Wear a mask. <laughs> <laughs> Senator Bayer, thank you very much for being with us today. Thank you for having me. We appreciate it. Senator Rosemary Bayer from the 12th District in Michigan with us on the Oakland County Megacast. We appreciate having her on the program today.